throws up some major leadership challenges. The way of leading and following is so different. Japan masks what is going on from the foreigner boss, so you have to spend a lot of energy to understand the lie of the land. There are bogs and quicksand aplenty if you get it wrong. Welcome back to this weekly edition every Monday of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coaching and training guy, president of Dale Carnegie Training Japan, and two-time best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery. We are bringing the show to you from our high-performance center, here in Akasaka, in Minatoku, the business center of Tokyo. Why the cutting edge? In this show, we are looking at the critical areas for success in business in Japan. We want to help advance everyone's thinking so that we can all be at the forefront, at the cutting edge of how to flourish here in this market. This is episode number 144, 144, and we are talking about Peter Drucker, leadership, and Japan. So let's get going. Peter Drucker has this great quote. Only three things happen naturally in organizations. Friction, confusion, and underperformance. Everything else requires leadership. That is a very profound and pithy observation by Drucker. In this modern day and age, why do we still encounter these three horsemen of the apocalypse of organizational dysfunction? You would think we would be better organized by now. Each horseman signals its own raft of challenges, magnified even further when operating in Japan. Friction is a tricky one in Japan for foreign bosses because so often it is subterranean. Power struggles, factions, proxies, turf, ego, all come into play here, but not so overtly that they are easy to spot. Influence is achieved through access to key people and decisions more often than over the bodies of enemies. Apart from when bosses discipline subordinates, screaming abuse at colleagues isn't acceptable in Japan. The problem here is getting the issues out on the table for resolution more than anything else. The age-old remedy of out-of-office discussions is usually where the boss finds out what is really going on as opposed to what was thought to be happening. It is highly unlikely staff will seek out the Gaijin boss and download all the skullduggery, etc., going on. You will have to unearth it for yourself. Presuming you are able to achieve such a worthy goal, that is only half the battle. Now, what do you do about it? The typical boss technique of getting two people in a room and then commanding them to sort it out may work in the West, but it won't work here. I'm not sure that this actually works anywhere, but that doesn't stop supposedly intelligent and experienced people from trying it though. Rather, we need to really dig out the issues and manage the resolution process. In particular, we need to pay careful attention to those spurious yes statements, 
which in Japan indicate I heard you, but that doesn't mean I agree with you. This ensures that the follow-up is critically important to make sure that the solution is actually executed and everyone is doing what they said they would do. White anning, backsliding, artful misinterpreting of what was agreed, untrue communication, gap excuses, willful disobedience, ball-faced lying, expect the whole gamut. Confusion is usually the result of unclear processes and unclear communication. The Japanese language is a big culprit because in the hands of native speakers, it is genius at leaving things muscularly vague. Having a process and having a common understanding of the process, not the same thing. In the same vein, common sense is not common. And unaccounted for action is often the project success killer. Now, you might believe that we should move directly from A to B, but that doesn't mean and doesn't guarantee that others will share that same view. They might think a little detour to Q is more appropriate. So we need to spell out the process in detail, and we need to check for understanding. Expecting the next logical step to be logical for everyone else is too bold a step. Specifying, micromanaging the detail, checking back ad nauseum are often the minimum requirements. Find out more, we come back from the break. If you want to be successful as a leader, do the leadership training for managers course. All companies need people who can both manage and lead. Leading people screams out for real skills in communication, dealing with all different types of people, being excellent at innovation, planning, delegation, handling mistakes, doing performance reviews really well, and inspiring and motivating the team. Do the Leadership Training for Managers course now in either Japanese or English. Are you doing business with Japan? Do you really know how things work? Japan Business Mastery provides the answers. Do you have the right networks and know how to create them? Do you know how to get on the same wavelength with Japanese buyers? Do you know what being trustworthy looks like from the Japanese perspective? Japan Business Mastery is based on more than 30 years experience in Japan and will become your go-to guide. Want to succeed in Japan? Bye. Japan Business Mastery, now. Welcome back. Underperformance is usually a factor of skill or motivation gaps. Skill gaps can generally be closed through providing quality training, mentoring, and coaching. Motivation, though, is a lot harder. It's a more difficult subject. This is often a systemic problem starting at the top. The senior leaders determine the culture of the organization. If the atmosphere is to defer to seniority by rank and age, then don't expect too much innovation occurring anytime soon. If middle management only understand the two hammers of what and how, and don't have why, in their explanation toolbox, expect employee passive compliance. It boils down to why be creative when you don't care? Latching onto the why care drivers is critical if we want to move forward and succeed in the market. The latter, by the way, is brimming with competitors. Three things drive engagement. Firstly, the relationship with the immediate supervisor, the boss. So trust and communication are paramount. Secondly, the belief by those at the bottom that those at the top actually know 
what they are doing. This definitely requires middle management to cascade down the top group's why. Thirdly, pride in the organization necessitates a one-team approach rather than a self-obsessed, internally oriented, power struggle, capital of the universe approach. This is why we talk about leadership at all levels. We need the alignment and agreement on why we are doing it. What is it we need to do? How do we need to do it? And what does success look like? As Drucker points out, leaders need to lead, but often in Japan, they just rotate through positions in large organizations every couple of years, miraculously always starting on uh, the new position on April 1st. They never take any significant decisions. They avoid as many initiatives as possible, and by keeping their heads down, they anticipate a cushy retirement. This is why we love working in Japan. Never a dull moment here. Action steps, number one. Carefully investigate the causes behind issues between staff. Two, get agreement to correct the problem and then keep checking that what was agreed gets done. Three, communicate more often and more regularly the same key messages. Don't imagine People get it with just one pass by. Four, keep hammering away at the why. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show is here to help you succeed in Japan. Subscribe on YouTube. You share with your family, friends, and colleagues. Become a regular. Thank you for watching this episode. And remember, hit the subscribe button. Our website details are on screen now, enjapan.dalekani.com. It's awesome value, so check it out. Please leave me some feedback on YouTube. I would love to know how this show helped and what other topics you're interested in for me to cover. Remember, I'm here as a free resource to help you, so just tell me how I can help you best. You might also enjoy my other weekly shows for podcasts, Mondays for the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show podcast. Tuesdays, we have the Presentations Japan series. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan series. Fridays for the Japan Business Mastery Show. And Saturdays, we have Japan's top business interviews. You get these wherever you get your podcasts. Also, on Fridays, I release my TV show, The Japan Business Mastery Show, and on Saturday, Japan's top business interviews, all released on YouTube. Episode number 145, we're talking about what the pro public speakers do. Find out more about that next week. So, yoroshiku, onegai tashimasu. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan business show. We are here to help you. And we've only got one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up. <laughs>